Hello, welcome back to Crypto Mischief. Richie here. Thanks for joining me for another video. I uh, hope you enjoyed my past few videos. If you did get into the last two projects I was talking about, the Space Rat and the Polydoge, we did it. I actually I cut my thumb. <laughs> we did it. Yeah. <laughs> we got some some really good gains. I hope you took some profits. If you didn't take some profits, I guess hodl until you can take some profits. Um, I myself, I did very well on both and I have cut a little bit of off the top, but I'm continuing to hold both projects, the majority of both, of course, because I believe in them. I think they're both great projects. And actually, Polydoge and Space Rat, funnily enough, I didn't even know this, but they've gone into a collab. So if you don't sell any of your Space Rat before next week, you will be airdropped Polydoge. Pretty nice. The Space Rat are going to be doing different kind of airdrops for diamond handed uh, investors. So for me myself, I don't plan on selling anymore because now I have my moon bag. Yeah, I took out basically some of my initial investment and now I'm going to let the rest ride. So hopefully for the next diamond hands airdrop, I'm going to be in and it's going to be a different token. So they're going to do different tokens airdrop to you for being uh, a solid investor. So today's video is a kind of response to a comment I got uh, a couple weeks back from a subscriber. Subscribe to my channel, by the way. I actually replied to you. I care about you. <laughs> this subscriber, sorry, I can't remember your name. I'm going to have to check that. They asked me to describe what my thought process is when I'm choosing farms. How do I know which farms are good? How do I know which farms are crap? What do I go in with? How do I find them? Uh, loads of questions, okay? So I thought I'd break it down for you into this video. I'm going to basically offload my entire thought process for yield farming, okay? This is about a year and a half's worth of experience since kind of yield farms got kind of kicked off with like sushi and yam. Remember yams? <laughs> so this is a lot. I've been in so many farms, hundreds of farms on all kinds of blockchains. And I've been rugged, I've had successes, I'm still doing it, and I think it's profitable, okay? I'm going to explain what I'm doing at the moment in this kind of landscape with Bitcoin just kind of middling around, not really knowing if it's going to go up or down, what am I farming with, okay? And what kind of risks am I taking and which kind of risks am I deciding not to take? So without further ado, we're going to get straight into today's video. I actually think that the information I'm going to be dropping on this video, unlike some of my other videos, the information I'm giving you here is not exactly time sensitive. I think that this kind of information will do you for pretty much your whole career as a yield farmer. Okay, if Bitcoin's up, if Bitcoin's down, it's all going to be pretty good. If you follow my advice that I'm giving you here, not financial advice. <laughs> Let's get into today's video about how to be a profitable yield farmer. For the benefit of this video to talk about uh, concerning the terms I'm going to be speaking about. Wait, we turn this into light mode, actually. It's easier to see everything. Okay, we're going to use Polycat uh, because Polycat is on the Mactic ecosystem and it is a pretty stable farm at the moment. It's been doing very well. Before we get into talking about the farms, I'm just going to take you through the generic farm. Yeah, this is a normal kind of DGEN yield farm, loosely based on Goose Finance or PancakeSwap, okay? So this would be my example of a successful farm. We will also go in and I will find you a basically just open farm and I'll tell you what to, what to watch out for. At the end of this video, I'll tell you what to watch out for in a new brand new open farm and what I expect to happen with it. Okay, it might not happen. It might happen. Okay, Polycat would be my recommendation for a safe farm on Matic to get into at the moment. Uh, please don't do your own research on this, but I have been in this farm for quite a while and it's paying out very nicely for me. We first you would go to the home button. Okay, you're going to see your farms and how much staking and what rewards you have. Okay, that's all good there. So I have a dollar. Very nice. Uh, you can always on the right hand side, we have news. I like Poly Cat because they're continually adding news and new things, new vaults, new partnerships, new ways to use their token. Okay, this is very key to a yield farm. Yeah, their token, this one down here, fish. Well, this token, yeah, fish token. They need to be able to give this a use case so that other people will use it not just for selling, but they're going to hold on to it and use it as a store of value, just like people do with cake token. 
uh, important statistics to watch out for in a farm. This TVL, total value locked. Here we have 232 million inside uh, this farm, which is a very strong number. We have 35 million in their vaults. Statistics down here, the market cap of the coin, okay? The total burned, the total minted. So there are 1.191 in circulation minus 16,000 coins. So that means the circulating supply is this number here, right? Uh, the maximum supply, so it is going to continue to go up. If a farm has a maximum supply, this is a great thing. That means that all, half of the tokens have almost already been minted. Uh, this is great because it means that the fish token eventually is going to be a little bit more valuable. The most famous token, which has a infinite value, would be Dogecoin. And I've, nobody really talks about this, but it will be printing forever. So it is inflationary, just like uh, cake is also inflationary. Cake will be printed forever. So do with that information what you will. For example, fish will stop printing, which means the price can stabilize. Printing tokens continuously will lower the market cap if the total locked value doesn't keep going up, okay? Because that means basically less people own the coin because a lot, the majority of people who own fish are going to be using this farm. They won't always be using this farm because as I will show you, okay? Uh, some farms have referral bonuses. Fish uh, Polycat does have one. My link is in the description. Use it if you want. Thank you very much if you never heard of this farm. Locks, fish is created, okay? That is a very fast creation rate, right? Fish is being created every 0.8 blocks. Blocks on Matic are very fast. So we will just continually see new fish being minted. Always on a farm. Over here on the left, we will have the homepage we're in. Usually farms have their own trading decks. Uh, Polycat does not have its own one, but you can go to different uh, trading decks to build liquidity. Different pairs need different liquidity. So of course on Matic we have Sushi Swap, Quick Swap, DFYN, okay? They have three to choose from for swapping and pairing your liquidity together. Farms will have these two options. We have Farm for liquidity pairing. Polycat only has three pairs, which is very interesting because then you just have Fishmatic, 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 okay? With three different, this is, you are going to be in Quick Swap, you're going to be in Sushi Swap, or you're going to be in DFYN for building your liquidity. And almost all farms have a pool section where you take a single asset to earn the token. For example, we take this one here, Bitcoin, right? Put your rat Bitcoin in here and earn fish. APY 172%, APR 100%, okay? You can click on this and see what does that mean. So every day I'm going to get a return on my investment of 0.27. But the catch from almost all of these farms is if you go in with a single asset, there's a deposit fee of 4%. Right, the deposit fee is to buy back the token and raise the price. This is what they use it for. Always be aware that you need to make your 4% uh, back before you're in profit. Don't forget about that. It gets, t uh, it gets automatically taken out of your balance. The reason why Polycat is more successful is because it has other things now. We have uh, vaults where you can, for a 0.1% withdrawal fee, not 4% deposit fee, so this is pretty cheap. You only lose 0.1% of your pair when you put it in. This will auto compound your assets. You can do liquidity pairs or you can do single assets, okay? Uh, for example, US dollar for 14% APY. That is very good, 0.04% daily. It's auto compounding your money. Your money will grow in there as you keep it there. Uh, they have IFO, just like PancakeSwap launches tokens. They use their pancake, they use the cake token for these and then they burn off some cake token to create the new project. This is very bullish for Polycat because it gives another use case to the fish token. We always have info here. They are on all of these different charts and charts and of course at the bottom, very important for farms, audits. The audits we have here, TechRate is the basic bitch audit that everyone should have. It's not the most expensive one and it does not look so much into it. Obelisk is a much more expensive, kind of up there with Certic for audits. Most farms that you want to be putting out a substantial amount of money in should have at least two audits in there. But still, problems can arise. This is not 100% risk-free. Now that I've explained all the terms for these farms, let's get into my thoughts on yield farming. And then I will end with an example of what a basic uh, no-frills farm looks like, which generally I would stay away from at the end. Okay. A yield farm is essentially a way for you to earn passive income from 
the wealth that you already have. You are taking your hard-earned crypto, you are putting it into the farm to generate more wealth. This is why we call it farming. But at the same time, every farm that's ever been made is a Ponzi. It's Ponzi-nomics, yeah? The first in will always get better benefits than the last in. If we really think about it, stocks and shares and cryptocurrency, they are all kind of Ponzi's, you know? First in, first to gain, yeah? You stake the assets, you get the tokens. You sell the tokens you get, or you choose to compound the tokens and sell them later. But the majority of farmers who do stake, they sell. After they sell, the price goes down. After you get in, another farmer comes in after you. He pays a deposit fee, like you paid a deposit fee on most of these farms. They have a 4% deposit fee for staking, yeah? He pays them for the 4% deposit fee, which buys back and burns some of the tokens, raising the price slightly for you, who are already in, to sell at a better price. But then, when you do sell, the price lowers again, and the price dumps on the person before you. Or someone is dumping on you. <laughs> the more tokens minted, the lower the price. The more tokens sold, the lower the price. <laughs> you getting it here? Eventually, as tokens are continually minted each block, and over time, the total value locked in the farm peaks and begins to fall. The APRs fall. The token price dumps. And the last people into the farm don't make even the deposit fee back that they paid, that 4%. Unfaithful farmers, who were just after a quick payday, abandon ship. The farm becomes a ghost farm, an empty shell, devoid of gains, with no future development planned. They are doomed to failure. This is 99% of DGEN farms. And this is what we need to be careful of. We also need to know what they are. So you can go into these kind of farms and benefit from them if you know how to use them properly. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule. Some farms can stand the test of time. And funnily enough, it is usually the farms with lower deposit fees that survive. Pancake swap, Walt farm, auto farm, sushi swap. These are farms which have lasted for months that I still use. Newer farms, which I think do look promising, are Polycat, Polyzap, Frankenstein Finance, Liquid Driver, Drip Network, and BuySwap. These all offer something different to a farmer, but most importantly, they still to this day pay out. I will link all those farms in the description just under here, so you can check them out. So then this breaches the question, I'm in how many farms? <laughs> From those farms there, I'm in all of them actually. I just listed off 10 farms that I'm actually in and I'm saying they're still paying out. So then how many farms am I actually in at the moment? I would say right now, as of speaking, I'm in about 35 different farms over four blockchains on Ethereum, Matic, Binance Smart Chain, and Phantom Network. How do I continually, week on week, day on day, find these farms? I'm going to tell you, right? Finding potential gem farms can be very beneficial to your portfolio. It does, however, take a bit of detective skill to get it right. The simplest way to explain this is that by getting into a farm, the minute it launches, it's a good idea because the reward token that is being paid out will begin minting as you are being rewarded it. So the price of the token will be a fair one and the yield you're getting will be the highest probably of its entire farm lifespan in the first minute, 10 minutes of the farm being opened. Remember, the yield goes down as more people enter. The price goes down as more are minted and more sell. Some useful sites for finding farms uh, are first and foremost, Telegram. Why not join my Telegram? I have early calls about farms that I go into. Some farms I don't go into, I'll also let people know about so they can do their own research. Also, join every project's telegram that you can find. Join all YouTubers' telegrams. I personally am a part of about 1,000 telegram groups. I join every coin that I research, every coin that I buy, every YouTuber I watch, I will join in their telegram. I lurk in all corners of that app, just trying to find the next juicy coin. I scour these groups for sniffs of new farms, which can make me sweet, sweet gains. So here are some useful websites for finding farms, but be warned, some of these farms have rug that are mentioned in the site. So 
deep research and risk management is always needed. This is a useful app. You can also follow your yield on this, this website and they list a lot of new forums which have come out. This would be my second uh, go-to website for finding new farms. The first one would be this, link in the description for this one too, the Rug Steamer. They have a forum now where they continually list new farms and they color code them on the amount of risk that they expect it to have. More on this site later, okay? So you, you know, you're thinking, okay, now I can find all these farms. Great, but you're gonna get thrown so many farms. Literally, there are three or four farms launched every day on all these blockchains. So what farm should you be going into? You gotta understand that 99% of these farms are gonna fail, okay? 50% 50, 50 of these farms are not gonna make you profit, and about 25% of these farms are gonna rug. So it's all about use case, use case, use case. Developments that sustain a farm longer are the addition of extra use cases for the token. Trading decks, single asset staking, auto compounding, cross blockchain ability and partnerships. You should be looking for all of these. Of course, developments can be a carrot and a stick scenario, yeah? They're just offering you the next cool thing just to make you continue to farm or to buy the native token. But it, this never comes to fruition or when it does, it's a wet fish, okay? I usually do not pay attention to some claims when they use buzzwords. Buzzwords for me, which really fall flat at the moment are NFT marketplace, lottery, buyback and burn, and meme contest, okay? I don't pay any attention to farms who are mentioning any of these. I don't think they have any effect on raising the total value locked in the farm. Juicy APRs can often be honey traps. Every farm offers the highest APR when it opens. As more people join the farm, the APR falls. As more people are getting a share of the tokens being minted per block. The highest API is always from staking the reward token. They want to give you incentive to buy the reward token to keep the price of the reward token up. This is an attractive uh, incentive to newcomers coming into farm when they see a high price reward token. The liquidity pair yield with the reward token is always higher than single asset staking. The price of the reward token almost always eventually declines to zero. Examples of tokens which have not uh, declined, which have declined and gone back up would be cake, and Polyfish, but Polyfish is much newer than Cake. Cake is on the Binance Smart Chain, I'm sure you know it. Polyfish uh, is on Polygon Matic. You will get rugged. You will. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Often in crypto, when it seems too good to be true, it usually is a scam. If a farm's APRs are unreasonably high for longer than usual, about more than a week, if the token price doesn't dump, even though we know that everyone is selling. This means that bad actors are at hand. I made a video before, oh, this is about a year ago, when I got, last time I got rugged, was on Shark DeFi back in Tron. Sorry for mentioning it, I'm sure some of you got rugged too. <laughs> so they were personally buying the token to keep it floating, yeah, basically, and spinning a tale of success, even though everyone was selling that token, right? No one was really compounding it. More people were selling. And then in the end, they just rugged everything. Yeah. Someone pulls the liquidity from the token, dumping the price of the native asset, meaning that say, if you have bought the farmable reward token, you're going to lose all your funds in that, dumping the price, making it impossible to sell. Or they drain the entire farm contract, leaving with all your assets. To protect yourself from being rugged, I refer you back to the Rug Steamer forum, where, of course, they are not 100% foolproof on their opinion either, but it is a good place to start in your research of the safety of the farm that you want to get into. High total lock value means you missed the boat, but the boat won't easily sink. We can't predict the future, and knowing which farms are going to end up with more than $1 billion of lock value is something that I can't teach you because I can't predict the future. I can't guarantee that a farm is going to be successful. Farms die, it's a fact of life. The benefits of setting up camp in a farm early, compounding the reward token, 
while of course taking profit too, and then watching the total value locked and reward token price explode are obvious. But we can't always be early and we can't go into every farm even as much as we want to. Your investment should be substantial enough to make good gains. So don't cut up your pie too much between farms because it means that actually the profit you're making will be uh, too small to actually be worth the effort of spending all that time and all these dApps. On the other hand, getting into a farm that already has a high TVL can have its positives too. It means that there is a loyal community of farmers who have been compounding and even hodling the reward token. The chances of a farm with a high TVL rugging are significantly lower than one with a low TVL. High TVL farms often have much more developed roadmaps and can offer juicy APYs for much longer periods. High TVL farms usually build partnerships and allow you to even farm their reward token in other farms. As a rule of thumb, I break down total value locked kind of like this. If the total value locked is under 1 million, it's either an amazing opportunity or a huge red flag. So do your own research there. If it's under 10 million, that is the sweet spot for any DGEN yield farm. It could explode. It's got enough in it to make it safer than something with only 1 million TVL. 30 million, the peak TVL of the majority of farms that I've come across. Once you see a small or unamazing clone farm at 30 million TVL, I would recommend not going in because it's probably downhill from there. Over $100 million total lock value, there's a high chance of the tokens being dumped on your head. Be very cautious. Over 500 million top tier farm, do your own research, but I'm probably already in that farm and it's doing quite well. Uh, Polyfish is close to 500 million. Walt Farm is close to 500 million. These are top tier farms. So this would be what I would call a high TVL farm. Liquidity farming versus single assets. It's easy to get carried away with farming. I generally follow a rule of no loose crypto, which I think was first said by the YouTuber Stunner Breezy. What it means is that I don't have much loose crypto in my wallet. It's all farming. Yeah, it's being used to get me more gains. But we all learned a valuable lesson the last time Bitcoin dumped, didn't we? Losing 50 to 60% of the value of all your alts really destroys your farming gains. <laughs> Since that correction, I made a decision to kind of rethink my strategy. Firstly, in terms of single asset staking, apart from the assets that I'm still waiting to recover my value from, like Boo Token on Phantom Network, uh, Quick Swap on Matic, Walt X on Binance Smart Chain, and just my Ethereum tokens, I'm solely staking in new farms with stablecoin assets. I like US dollar coin, but often I see higher yield with DAI, so I might change to that. Obviously, when the market corrects again, I will not lose any value in my farming assets with stables, but it does make the farming slower because I get lower yields with stables than with more exotic pairs. So compounding my reward token back into stables goes some way to speeding this up. This means that, of course, I am a fan of single asset staking. I will take the US dollar coin, I will pay the 4% deposit fee, and I will wait for that deposit fee to be paid off. And then from that point on, it is free crypto. Okay, this is at the moment my strategy. Once I've paid off the 4% deposit fee, I sometimes consider going into liquidity farming, which would be taking two assets, pairing them together in liquidity. Most farms offer their own exchange to do this or will tell you to go to a specific exchange to pair the liquidity. We all know about the warnings and the problems with impermanent loss. It does mean that the reward token that you're pairing with could lose its value. Yeah? You could get all your tokens dumped on your head and the value of this reward token will decline rapidly, meaning that whatever you've paired it with will be affected too, okay? Generally, what happens is if I pair the reward token with a stable coin like USDC and farm with it, I will get a much higher APY. But when that reward token dumps and I unpair my liquidity, I will have less stable coin and I will have more 
of the reward token, which is now worth nothing, meaning that actually my liquidity token is now worth nothing until either the reward token goes back up, which rarely happens, or I just eat the loss, which is why generally people sell reward tokens. It's what they're for. They are a reward. The last part of this discussion about yield farming of some advice that I'm going to give to you is about reporting everything. Okay. You should, as a farmer, having note, just an Excel sheet is enough of how much you put into the farm, right? Are you paired in liquidity? How much was in when you first went in there compared to how much then you can check how much you have at the moment, the impermanent loss, you can check on that. Okay. What is the price of the reward token? Is it going up or down? How much are you profiting every day from this farm? Make a note of it. You can just follow. Then after one week, you can say, okay, what I like to do these days is to compound one day, sell into stablecoin the second day, compound the next day, sell into stablecoin. I keep a pretty uh, strict ledger of the progress I'm having in all the farms and I can start to see which farms are getting me bigger gains so I can start adding more into those farms when I'm compounding. Uh, when I sell into stable coins, I'm sending generally that into Polygon Matic's Ave to use that as collateral to borrow more stable coin out and put it back into the farms. Kind of propping up my a building an empire inside Ave, yeah, of collateral and lending, which I think will become really useful in the bear market. But I'm doing it with stable coins because if I use Matic for this, then that obviously will dump when the big correction does come. I'm not saying it is coming, but eventually it will. Something will dump. Something always dumps. I'm preparing for that. Okay, so here we are on RugDoc, the website I told you about before. This is run by an independent group of uh, auditors. They are not certified auditors, but they are doing a damn good job of alerting the community to what they think is safe and not safe. Okay, so up here we can browse. So we're going to browse a farm on Matic. Okay, and here we have, yeah, no border is, could still have some dangers, but neutral. Orange, higher level of risk. Red, probably stay out of there because you're going to get rugged. Let's have a look at Poly Pingu. It is orange, which means it might have some issues. Fork with some custom code and referral. Custom code is mainly about a 14-day 20% bonus for the first two pools. Uh, shouldn't have any problems. Okay. So, right, of course, you can straight away see that this is a, a almost identical rip of the Poly Cat. And we have 5 million total value locked already in this farm. The price of Pingu is $19. There's $19 here. Uh, the market cap, 492 million, total mint to 28,000. Circulating supply, 25,000, okay? No stop on how many are going to be minted, right? We have pools. What are these? So pretty good APYs, you, you'd think, yeah? 2,229. You're getting 6% daily return on your investment right now but this farm has only been open a day okay this is going to fall extremely fast if this is continually minting tokens without circulate without a stop on the circulating supply then i can really guess you can probably time stamp this right from the day that we're talking about this now we have five million already locked in this farm i'm probably going to predict you that if you did go on this farm you're going to get these tokens dumped on your head <laughs> definitely I wouldn't say it doesn't have an audit. No, there's no audit. <laughs> so it's an unaudited farm with 5 million total value locked and vaults coming soon. They don't have any vaults. Information, nothing really, okay? Uh, Telegram, let's have a look. 600 members in the Telegram. So this would be my example to you of a farm which I would not touch with a 20-foot pole, okay? This is what I mean about the dangers of getting to farms without doing your due research. Uh, let's check one more farm. Let's check Golden Bull. Okay, this one has no problems in their uh, audit. It is not launched yet. We have 17 hours to get into Golden Bull. Let's take a look. 500 million total value locked, under 1 million. So like I said in my rules, be cautious. You need to do a bit more research there. It is not opened yet, so it could be hopeful. Uh, market cap, 380 million. Total minted will uh, is 8,000 so far. 
total burn, zero. Circulating supply, 8,000. The maximum supply is just under 10 million. So it does have a max supply, which means it will not be inflationary forever, which is always a good thing. Trade, they have their own trading decks. Very good. Pools. Okay, these APYs are, of course, insane. They will change as soon as you as people start entering these. It will not be a 118% daily ROI. That would be amazing, but it will not be that. It will drop significantly. Let's see what they are once everything's kind of calmed down. Your crops. That is an unfinished part of the site. They have a referral bonus for this information would be the charts, upcoming uh, lottery, collectible, king of bull. These are kind of games they use to burn the token. There's nothing that revolutionary. Okay, so uh, they have one audit already by tech. So for this farm, from looking at it just quickly over that one minute, two minute period there, I would say if I was did have some spare crypto to go into a farm and try and make some profit on it, I would go into this farm. I think it's going to be good for about uh, maybe a week to two weeks. This might perform quite well. The $47, I think, will not stick around that. Probably will fall unless the total value lock can get up to about $30 million. Then we could see a $100 token. Okay, so that is how I go through these farms and I find out the ones that I want to get into and the ones I don't want to get into. So that is today's video on some advice for you for yield farming. I hope you appreciate the knowledge I just dropped on you. You might have to watch this again. If you have any questions about yield farming, please just fire one in the comments. I will try my best to answer every single one of you. Thanks for watching. Be good to each other. All links in the description. Don't get wrecked.